Someone took her life from her. You can't even fake it. I'm creeped out. David was convicted of murdering his wife. You f***ed up. No! <laughs> I'm starting to believe it wasn't a mistake. You know it's crap. It's a crappy story. That would work on me. And your story is BS. Oh, that's the end of it. What? David Tronis said that his wife had passed away. When the first responders arrived and they found Shanti's body, he claimed that he found her in the tub and um, she must have drowned. But very quickly, they figured out that the tub was not wet and her body was not wet. So David was lying. Sometimes it is hard if you have the water running to hear somebody out there. So that, that was my assumption. Okay, so you, it's one room. You don't see her? Until I get to the bathroom. Okay. Yeah. Is the bathroom door open or closed? Open. Open. Writing down every detail so that if he changes his story later, that's evidence. So the water's like half full. She's submerged partially, but she's also partially not submerged. And one of her legs is kind of sticking up and out a little bit. And it's just extremely awful and it doesn't look natural. Obviously she fell or something happened. I tried to pick her up. I turned the water off. I tried to pick her up. Besides the fact that he's claiming she drowned while running her bath water in a half bath, this sounds pretty, pretty silly. It's not completely, you know, outrageous, but you know, the investigators know at this point, her body wasn't wet, the tub wasn't wet. This didn't happen. David was convicted in just in October of 2023 of murdering his wife. What I find really creepy about this is this low and slow tone that he has while describing everything. This is how people talk when they're calm, when they're just, you know, explaining something. People that have a lot of emotional control. But what's creepy to me is he's a killer. He, he, he is a killer. He is a person that moments ago just lost control. And now he's in the interrogation room in this high pressure situation, talking very low, very controlled. I don't know what that means, but I'm creeped out, okay? That's how I feel. I'm creeped out. I turned her and I held on to her, her wrist. I thought that I'm still thinking that there's something I can do to help. I'm kind of moving her, trying to get her to shake her a little bit and trying to get the water out of her lungs. I got her in front of the couch and I had to, I had to stop. I put her down and I tried to, to lift her head up to kind of clear. Like you, I Hold guess on, like armchair psychologist. I summon you, <laughs> I summon you. The, the bat signal is up. Can any of you guys explain why this slow whispering talking is really creepy? I haven't really seen it before, but I just know it makes me feel uncomfortable. Commenters, you tell us too, but let's look at chat. I like this one. K9 said, it's like he's trying to make himself seem less threatening. No emotions, it's a little soulless. He seems emotionally unavailable. Oh, ooh. Redead said, it's very intimidating and it makes it feel like he's the one in control. Anna says, it's like he's planning his words before he says them. Yeah, talking about his wife's death with not a big sense of sadness, talking with like more control rather than what seems like sadness. Yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know. It's a, there's something unnerving about it. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what had happened. I tried, I had a towel that I had used to pull her out of the shower or out of the tub with. I tried to wipe off to see what was... Where was the blood coming from? The left side of her face. Like, like an impact wound, perhaps? You're trying to see somebody drown in the tub. Uh, it's like, okay, why would they be bleeding? Okay, maybe, maybe there's some world where they're like bleeding from their nose or like caught, I don't know, something like that. But now he's like, uh, she was bleeding from her cheek. What? That didn't happen. If she did, she would have fell backwards. And you didn't find her at 3 o'clock. That didn't happen. Hold on. 
I have to tell you more about this case. A jury found a Florida man guilty of first degree murder for killing his wife after she refused to appear on the reality TV show Zombie House Flipping with him after he was exposed for lying about inheriting millions. He was sentenced to life in prison by a judge on Wednesday for the 2018 murders of his wife. Common sense would tell you if you pull a woman soaking wet out of a tub at three o'clock and call the police within six minutes, then everything will be soaking wet when the police arrive. Oh, yeah. Within three minutes of that. That's true. That's common sense. So oh. how does everything dry up? That's our question. Because she happen? wasn't pulled out at three o'clock. They're saying the floor wasn't wet. The tub wasn't wet. The rugs were not wet. She, she was not wet. Nothing was wet. There's a science behind evaporation. <clears throat> and that science is not matching. It's not the magic. Three okay. o'clock. I can take a shower at 6.30 in the morning and at 10 o'clock at night, my towel's still wet. Oh, she's not having it! Dude, why does he look like a little kid trying to figure out a lie right now? I don't know what happened when I wasn't there. No, I'm, I'm, I, there I'm had, sure. There had, there had to have been, there had to have been close to well over an hour in the morning that I wasn't there. It didn't happen when you were gone. It happened when you were there. The evidence and her body speak for itself. And your story is BS. Oh, oh. So you better figure it out. She said, you better figure it out. Give me a new story. And, and that's why her writing down every detail from the beginning was so critical. Like whether he says the door was open or shut. He said she had like a leg sticking out of the tub. She sat there and she wrote all of that down. And then they pushed him and they demand a new story. Now when we go to trial, there's footage. Footage of him telling this bullshit story and then him having to change it. And then they present him with more evidence again, probably. And then he changes it a third time. That is how you have to prove a liar in the interrogation room sometimes. If I was an interrogator and I was dealing with a bunch of dudes in the county that just seem really immature a lot of time, I'd be throwing on my mom voice all the time just to see if it worked on him. Just to, just to see, if it, I, you, you better tell me what really happened. I don't, I don't know how to do it, but I would learn. I would learn. I would do it. <laughs> I'd be damn good at my job. If you maintain that, you're going to look like a fool. Dude, the point, just the way she said fool, like there's a couple of words she could have said there that would have made me feel so stupid. Bro, if she said, if you if you keep that up, you're going to look like a buffoon. That would that would pierce my soul. A buffoon? No! <laughs> that would work on me. Picture telling that story with your mother sitting there listening to that. <laughs> no, she did not! Try people can be sympathetic when they hear people be honest and remorseful. They can be empathetic to a situation that gets out of hand. He's completely locked up at this point. They're trying a couple different tactics, but also, I, I think that lady in the interrogation room is genuinely pretty disappointed in him. Like, really? That's the story that you have? come on you gotta be kidding me now they're switching to another tactic which if you watch a lot of these interrogation videos you're probably pretty familiar with a lot of these but it's where they try to appeal to hey did something else happen did something happen where you're actually the victim or it was a mistake and this is just all crazy and it can be explained away but it's just another method of trying to get him to tell another story and they can keep flipping his story on its head and then he looks like a liar in the courtroom Let's see if he reacts to that tactic. This BS about three o'clock and tubs and it's crap. It's crap. You know it's crap. It's a crappy story. Yeah, you don't know what happened when you were gone. I get it. But you know what happened when you were there. And that's what counts. You know, you fake cried for about seven or eight oh. hours today. Not one tear came out of your eyes. Not one. Not one, not on scene with the officers, not in this room. You have fake cried over this woman's death since we made contact with you oh. for hours. There is not a lick of remorse for what you did to this woman, not even a little bit, okay? I'm really starting to believe you wanted her dead, and I'm really starting yeah. to believe you planned it. You sat there for the last two hours and stared at her picture, and you haven't cried. Not one tear. Mm. You're staring at the woman you're telling us you're in love with, and you've done nothing the whole time. Mm. But close your eyes, huddle up, and protect your own ass. 
I would be under the table in a ball if I was in love with that woman and she was dead. I, I would be inconsolable. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. I wouldn't even be able to utter the words or talk to detectives for six or seven hours True. like you have. True. True. Okay? You've not shed one tear in that picture. And you've been staring at it since she presented it to you. Two hours ago. Over two hours ago. You are not remorseful for what happened to her. You could give two sh about what happened to Shanti tonight. Oh. Okay? I told you she was murdered. Murdered. Someone took her life from her, and there's nothing. You can't even fake it. That's how much you could give a Ooh. I know you think your theatrics and your maybe some drama that you've had in your past was good. It was terrible. Oh. The officers on scene didn't believe you, and neither do we. Reading to fail! You f***ed up. That's the end of it. You screwed up. You made a mistake, whatever it is. I'm starting to believe it wasn't a mistake. I'm starting to believe that David wanted this chick dead. For whatever you might gain, for control, creative control of the house, so you can direct the build. I don't know what your motivation would be. But I know you stand to benefit. I know that the show that's going to happen is now yours. That all the decisions that are made are now yours. The 250 grand you tend to inherit, you can build the house of your dreams. Maybe never work again. Because he didn't have the money he claimed he did before. I know there's motivation. Is it the accurate motivation? Maybe not. Is it what I'm going to paint you as? Probably. Later in the trial, they were pretty easily able to prove that David was living a lie. From what he was doing at night to how much money he said in the bank. His team argued that he was severely mentally ill which we see happens all the time in trials. But then again, you do have to be pretty severely mentally ill to murder somebody. I Like, I, I don't see how that's an excuse. A lot of us are sick and we ain't doing f***ed up f like that. I like the way they handled that. That was, that was a, that was a doom spiral.